28, live in Dubai here, 1.5 Media Innovators Magazine, Mark Buckley, speaking to Tammy here from Unify, CEO of Unify. First of all, thank you for being here. We're on the sky bar rooftop in the middle of the green zone. We found a secluded, quiet place, hard to find in the green zone, let alone at the COP. There are 200 countries here, party delegations, non-party delegations, uh, green zones, blue zones, two weeks of unbelievable activities going on all at the same time for eight to 12 hours. Yeah. And you and I, I would say, gravitated towards each other at the Dubai Future Forum. Before the COP even started, we met at the Dubai Future Forum forum put on by the Dubai Future Foundation and the Museum of the F Future. What a synergy that we we found each other and that now we're meeting again here at the COP. Welcome and can you tell us just a little bit about yourself, your role and Unify and why you're here at the COP? Sure, sure, sure. Um, absolutely. And this, our meeting was one of many synergies that have been rolling out uh, uh, seemingly miraculously and wonderfully this week. So I was very grateful and glad to have met you and really glad to be here today. Um, I'm Tammy Scarlett, Executive Director of Unify and founder of the Impact Portfolio with the White Lotus Global Initiative. Initially, we were invited to COP with our uh, peace partner, A.Y. Young, who was also an ambassador for the Sustainable Development Goal. Um, and that was kind of what got us on the docket uh, to be here this year. And then there were a number of things that emerged from there. It's, I'm noticing that this year is a year of collaboration, radical collaboration, like, like I haven't seen before in my lifetime. And so uh, between that plan and now, uh, there are multiple different um, collaborations that have emerged. And now I find myself in the middle of uh, well, I'm sure as you do, um, many, many events <laughs> sandwiched into uh, a week. But glad, glad to be here. Unify, of course, does global synchronized meditations and facilitates action campaigns globally and with many, many thousands of partners on the ground all over the world. So this, this work that's being done here is quite significant to us. It really is. And it's really interesting, beautiful how these synergies and these connections come together, how we can find amongst a lot of noise, space for reflection, space for meditation, space for quietness, that we even have found a quiet spot to talk amongst all the noise is really a beautiful thing. We're here at the COP asking a bunch of questions, and so I want to get those out of the way so that we can talk about the real beautiful things. There's this thing, a meme, a cup half full. It's a perspective of, you know, the glass half full, and it's a cup half full. And I want to know, what's your optimistic perspective? You've seen everything here now at the COP in the green zone, in the blue zone. You saw the Dubai future uh, form. I want to know what your impressions are. And what's your optimistic perspective? There's a lot of controversy for, for this COP, and we're in a big fossil fuel, United Arab Emirates, and yet I still believe there's some hope. Thank you for asking that question. A COP half full. Well, you know, I am no stranger to controversial places. I, uh, I took a little bit of flack for being in Davos this, this past year uh, because some people are not big fans of the World Economic Forum. Some of our, our you know, partners and audience are not um, big fans of the UN. Everybody to each their own in terms of their opinion and with whom they want to align. As Unify, we're really trying to facilitate that uh, kind of golden thread that runs between us, that connects all things regardless of um, those perspectives. And in my role and the work that I'm setting out to do in the planet, I would rather be in these rooms, having these conversations, then closing the door and contributing to the us versus them mentality, which I believe to be a separation mentality. I think it's just fine to call out things that are true and that need to be recognized and identified, but it's so that we can move forward with solutions. The identification of the problems can be quick and our energy then can convert to the innovations that lead us into solutions and inviting collaboration around those innovations when they make sense. So for the cup being half full, for me, I back up, you know, 
out into outer space. <laughs> and I look down at the planet, I imagine, right, in my mind. And I look down at the planet and I think to myself, where is humanity right now and what are we doing? And I'm deeply, deeply grateful that we, for whatever reasons, even if there's ulterior motives mixed in there somewhere or in many places, we still collectively have a result that's being delivered that says that attention is being given towards these problems that have a short period of time. Some people are spending all of their energies raising awareness. Some people are spending all of their their energies rallying people in their local vicinities or, you know, whatever their particular track is that they're trying to do to contribute, at least that is being done. And I would rather have that being done than not. I think that's a big part of my cop half full. The other part for me, though, is that I also believe that where you go in the world, if you expect serendipities, if you expect that alignment will go before you and you kind of call that out and take those intention to take those steps yourself, you'll be met with those types of things, those types of serendipities. So for me, the moment I set foot in Davos, literally the moment I stepped off the, the train into the snow and was greeted by a woman who has my daughter's name, which is a very rare name, who then offered to walk me to my hotel. Uh, my very first introduction and everything that followed me that week was was that level of serendipity and synchronicity and my experience here has been no different so um i'm not saying to tune out the stuff that is not um pleasing or not aligned i'm saying look at it and acknowledge it and then move on from there the same way that you might run a race and trip over something and you don't sit there and continue fussing over it for a long time, you figure out what the destination point is and you rally your energy and your trajectory to get there. So um, that's my that's my view on the cop half full. And that's a beautiful view. And I, I love that you've experienced that not only at COP, Davos and Dubai Future Forum. By the way, I will be in Davos. I'm in Davos all the time. I'm also kind of part of the skeptical group, but I'm there to to nudge in the right direction and to make sure that the proper voices are heard. And I, I extend the invitation to you now to come to our salon up at the Swedish house up on the mountain. That's the Chief Sustainability Officer Awards for companies who are trying to do good, who are doing their best to move the lever towards sustainable development and the right things and and and, and bring together the right frequencies and, and momentum of action to, towards where we need to go in the future. And so I invite you there as my special guest and I'll offer you some, some space there as well. And I'd love to see you there as well. Uh, so that you. invitation is there. It stands. It's on, on video. Thank so you so much. Here, it's on record. <laughs> yeah, it's on record. The, the next and really hardest question that I have for you today is a really old one. It's over 70 years old. The world's been asking this question. It comes from our book, Minister Fuller, who was a futurist, an architect, designer, polymath uh, of the Buck Minister Fuller Institute. And he asked at another World's Fair in, in uh, Montreal, Canada in 1967 it was. We're at the Dubai Expo City, which was the kind of the World's Fair equivalent here. What does a world that works for everyone look like for you is the question. What does a world that works for everyone look like to me? I think that a world that works for everyone looks to me like a world where it is commonplace to relax into synergy, like our modus operandi. If that was our way of things, if that's our, if we lean into that like circuitry reciprocity that we already know is in flow energetically all around us, we can see that in quantum physics and various forms of mathematics. So we know that's constantly happening. It happens in nature. It also happens in our relationships. But it's our minds that decide to structure our constructs to do things differently. Our behaviors, our actions, our operating systems. So I feel like if the world gets to a place where just by nature, we're actually connected to nature and connected to one another. And in that natural flow, not having to struggle against anything, not having to war with ourselves or one another, but relaxing into the synergy of that connective tissue that is between us and all things. That's a world I would like to be in. It's a world where I'd like to be in too. Thank you so much.
definitely see the need for a lot more relaxing. There's a lot of stress, a stress in the world for sure. It's, it's beautiful to get inside of your ideas, to hear your answers to these questions. Uh, we have some other synergies going on. So we have the resonance project dot earth that we're doing. We're going to have you at a session, one of our sessions in the global innovation hub at the UNF triple C within the blue zone and have you partake with that. But we've also got a partnership going with you and the Alohas regenerative foundation and unify. And, um, I think it's so aligned with what Unify is doing and that we found each other and that there's these possibilities. What are your impressions in this very quick time uh, uh, of how this has come together and why you um, have made this possible? Oh, well, why, why, <laughs> why all of us are simultaneously making this possible? I mean, in 2016, I, uh, I wrote a little manifesto. It was like a big, long letter to the universe. And I started it on one piece of paper and I ran out of paper space. And so I taped another one to the bottom and like kept going. And pretty soon I had like a scroll. And in this uh, document, this letter to the universe, I was really letting the universe know. Like, and for anybody who thinks that's woo-woo, I mean, you can pick whatever you might want to write. A letter. Some people keep a diary. It's very similar, right? I'm just writing this letter to the universe and I included all of the things like I was stretching my own um, limits of what I thought might be possible in my lifetime. What would be really exciting to me to be able to know that I could be a part of somehow or affect change somehow. And so I started writing all these fictional things that in no way, shape or form had any real, any anchor in reality for my own life at the time. But a part of that was, uh, was these visions that I had for humanity, for the healing of humanity and for our planet. And I started to list off people that I trusted would come across my path, that I knew that these people, there would be intersections of moments that we would meet and then things could happen. We would meet and things could happen. Again, as I'm writing this letter, I'm thinking I'm just writing some fictional fantasy letter, but I'm doing it as an exercise to push my own boundaries. But I will tell you, we're in 2023 right now, and everything but one thing on that letter has come to pass since 2016. And I, and I thought it sheer fiction. The fact that these synchronicities happen, that we run into each other, I only met three people that day. One of them was you. The other two are also people that are integrally involved with the work that we're doing on, um, in the impact portfolio or their work overlaps it. So I just don't think it's by mistake. I think it's the fact that, that we um, end up magnetizing uh, to ourselves, you know, I to you, you to me, because the work that we're doing um, garners that kind of support. So we, by supporting one another, are going to amplify what the work that we were each already doing separately can do together. So that's what I'm most excited about is this kind of uh, exponential progress. Um, for me, it's about collapsing time and wave function and getting humanity uh, to where we need to be faster because there are clocks ticking in some regards. We can, it's not just about climate in my estimation. I mean, there's mental, mental health, health crises, the children committing suicide. There's all these things in the world that these imbalances are just not congruent with the directions that we're headed. So by us linking arms and inviting what maybe formerly would feel like a sense of competition, like you stay in your lane, I'll stay in my lane. <laughs> we'll see how each other does. But now if we take that same energy and we invite it to be a collaborative innovation, how much further can we go? So unify the, uh, the impact portfolio of the White Lotus Global Initiative with the Aloha Foundation, their uh, resonance project, and there are many projects actually that are op under both of our umbrellas that I'm very, very excited about what can come to fruition within uh, for this next year. Can you tell us a little bit more about the impact portfolio and exactly what's going on, what you're excited about about that? Sure, yeah, they gladly. The The impact portfolio um, was something that actually got spurred um, uh, into fruition from my experience in Davos uh, because when I was there, I was struck by the number of introductions that I had just one right after the other to people who were in charge of these enormously large funds, billions and billions of dollars, and they were dissatisfied with where the funds were going, the, either the um, financial ROI or the impact ROI. 
always looking for a better place, a more efficient place to put that money. In fact, that's what many of them are doing there. And then I would go into these other rooms where people that I either already knew or just met had paid enormous amounts of money to have a stage for a short period of time. I mean, we're talking 50,000, 250,000 uh, US dollars to have this stage time to a captive audience, and you don't even know exactly who's gonna be in the room. So they'll, they'll pitch these extraordinarily specific ideas and Perhaps it's not resonant with anyone in the audience. Perhaps maybe one or two people. It's kind of a it's kind of a gamble. What do they say? A crapshoot, right? You're just rolling the dice to see how it might turn up. And I thought I'm I'm witnessing the great mismatch of my lifetime right here because we as humanity have so many things available to us through technology. And we I mean we've had the internet since the 90s. <laughs> it's 2023. What are we doing here? Um, so I wanted to. I sat with that a little while and began to lean into the questions, what would you like to see? That's for me, that's one of my reflection questions when I would like to be able to invite a new idea into reality. So for systems change, that's one of my practices, right? So I asked, what would I like to see? And uh, basically started sharing some of the ideas that came out of that with a number of my um, other, other heads of organizations and companies that I know are really like purpose in moving humanity forward and just got 100% unanimous like I want to help how do I how do I help so it came, it came about right now it's in a, a beta where we have 20 member organizations that are all practicing um, collaboration collaboration context together in which they get uh, six different optimizations that kind of help bring everything up to speed with the way that we each do what we do on the planet which would include you know media engagement it would include branding um, your second order change uh, which is you know, theory of change, social change. Um, and then we have the, the leading researchers on the planet in collaboration who are pro-social world. They are fully funded by the Templeton Foundation, IRB certified, all of that. They're uh, doing this work with us. So all of the members get to participate in all of that and then receive grant funds to just continue the work that they were already doing in the world that was really amazing, but now they're going to get there faster. Now each dollar that goes into that container is going to be um, going to go much further and the collective gets that hive mind. They get to have that information from one another. So where we are 12 months from now, gets to be an exponential increase. So that's the model of the, uh, in short, <laughs> in long and short, for the impact portfolio. We're so excited about it. That's amazing. I can just see it when I talk to you a little bit. So Dina points as well. And it's just amazing what you guys are doing and how quickly you've come just once that intention, that manifesto was written and to only have one thing not fulfilled on that list is, is, is amazing. Thank you so much for sharing all your ideas and letting us inside of your ideas. That's really important to us. And we're going to have much more to do together, not only here at COP, but around the world and in life. And I'm so glad we've uh, come together and wish you a most successful COP. Thanks, Mark. It's my pleasure. Thank you. Thanks so much.